All right. So um, let's see, where to start in the Applied NL weekly team meeting. Um, so the first item, so what are the open questions on our new approach for milestone two? Uh, this is for me. What decisions are one-way doors, like hard to undo, hard to go back, where we may, and where we may not have buy-in from the stakeholders yet? And I've got the issue here, and we've had a really uh, lively debate in the issue. What are what are what are folks' thoughts? And Alexander, it looks like you have the first um, first impressions. Yeah. So my main question is for whom will the feature will uh, be enabled? So either on a per customer basis or for everyone. So that's the main question. Because I think that other things, they are consistent with the old version of Milestone 2 and except maybe for uh, review roulette replacement because we decided not to replace. Yeah, so definitely that's an easy one to answer uh, for me. So Milestone 2 is selected customers, including ourselves. It is, not all, it is definitely not all customers. Um, even if we had the ability to do that today, I don't know if we would, we'd wanna, we'd wanna try it out for a couple, learn from it, get feedback, et cetera. Um, the, one of the big questions, and I know Alexander, you and I discussed this uh, earlier this week, I think it's an issue as well, is when we, it, depending on the approach, when we enable on a per customer basis, um, is it a separate environment that's created to do the ML workloads for that customer, or is the same environment used, a shared one, just in the data partitioned by customer? And how much manual effort is it to set up the environments if it's a separate one per? So that's still a question for me. That's why we had a great discussion in one of the issues, how to automate all these things. So as far as I understood, so I think we, we need to, we, we can't uh, move the end RF pipeline to, to the customer CI drops. So maybe we need to do that externally. So it means that we have a, CI predefined, a predefined CI template to make recommendations and generate the artifacts JSON file. Then we can parse this uh, file. So that's fine, right? We can use uh, either the UI integration or bot integration. But the things like uh, data extraction, model tuning, training, I think they should go outside of customer CI jobs. So we can orchestrate them somehow, for instance, using Airflow or some similar tools. Because we already have this uh, pipe, like the, the stagers, we only need them to run. For instance, uh, once a customer wants to use this feature, we need to start extracting data and then we need to start training a model. And then we need to retrain the model, for instance, every week, every month, or after each uh, new merge request. And I don't know what I'm trying to, I guess I'm, I'm thinking as I look into the air, the, what, what information do you think we need to make the decision on approach on this? Uh, I think uh, who should maintain this infrastructure? That's the main reason because we introduce, like we don't introduce something new for the company for GitLab because I see that the, the data team already uses Airflow and some other tools. Uh, ETL tools, but in our case, for instance, uh, if we launch all these things on our side, so who should uh, maintain? One solution is to, to make almost the same thing as with the uh, data flow, right? Because it's only a backend for Apache Beam. So we can use, for instance, uh, Google Cloud Composer. So it means that we can write the same Airflow scripts and we can move them there to, to Google Cloud Composer. And once we decide to, for instance, to integrate with the data team or to do something else, so we can we can stop using Cloud Composer, for instance. So that's one of the cases. Great. And by, I, was, I was saying some notes while you're talking, but I missed a lot of what you said. So later on, if you could if you could update the notes document with what uh, other okay. what I missed, that'd be great. Or as you type, it's really hard to talk and type at the same time. I've gotten good. <laughs> I started out, I was poor at it and I still am not great at it. So, so, um, except from the notes of the infrastructure team should maintain the infrastructure. Um, I think definitely once it's in full production, maybe not a milestone two, but I would, unless we have a good reason not to, I would, I would still do that in milestone two. 
what about this? How about we implement the uh, CI job integration for one and then two of our own projects? So maybe for Giddily and for GitLab itself and to see what we learn from it and then decide rather than trying to predict the future perfectly, which is very, very hard to do is, is do it more iteratively. What do you think? What do you think of that approach, Alexander and everyone else? It's the only viable approach. Um, so, looking for um, uh, let's look at the challenges of GitLab, the product. Uh, ultimately, if we have an applied ML feature or reviewer feature, which we can dog food, we can use in our project, and on GitLab.com we can enable for customers, and on self-managed now they can extract their own data and they can even set up on their own. That's the ultimate target. Now, every component use that. Like if you go on and use a certain cloud provider or a tool which is not, which is a singleton, which is not uh, an open source component which uh, we can bundle, then we shall have this trouble, but those are uh, very long-term, uh, you know, architectural concerns, but ultimately, let's say, let me give you a, a silly example, for example. Let's say Postgres, it's an open source project. It's available everywhere, we use it. It's very easy to use. But if we use a component, which is not something we can bundle, which is not available everywhere we have GitLab self-managed, there's going to be, I think, um, long-term something missing. But short-term coming back, um, we can simply focus on GitLab.com, we can focus on GitLab, or even um, in a limited uh, rollout, we can focus on uh, GitLab's own projects. And one thing we know from GitLab that if we uh, use a feature very good ourselves, that feature becomes successful for our customers too. And finally, reviewer roulette, uh, like how many percentage of our customers are using reviewer roulette? Zero. Zero, exactly. So that's some people who know about venture so that's still wild west in short our um, customers probably go to the assignment or reviewer uh, select box combo and then choose their a reviewer by a human um, you know just guessing whom to choose overall i think our danger roulette or reviewer roulette is one thing which we didn't already um, make a feature available to everyone. And I hope with the new, um, I mean, under view integration, we can go beyond that limitation. Right. Oh, I know we jumped past, past some people's comments that have already written in. So um, uh, Taylor in particular, what are your thoughts? Overall, I like this strategy. I want to just say like, if we decide we need to not go the CI template route, that was just an idea I put out there. Um, but I could see how that could end up working long term, even for self-managed too. So I think this makes sense. Um, this gives us an, a very easy pattern for how we can do feature flagging as well as uh, selective customer enablement. So I, I feel good with this plan. I think we've got a good um, approach. I am very curious to hear Mon's thoughts on this though. Absolutely. Yeah, we don't we don't want to definitely finalize on our short term plan until Mon has a chance to weigh in. Uh, and even after we want to try to make things uh, two way doors decisions as appropriate. So let's say we go with the CI job integration. So the and which is in some ways I really like it because we do that for other things, and in some ways I don't. It's not the, the user the, the user experience is not great. Like I know we do that for at least or at least we did do that. For the secure scanners, where you um, you'd have to edit your uh, you know your your uh, CI uh, YAML file, and if you got it wrong, things wouldn't work correctly. It'd be better for it to be a button or even a feature flag. But we're early, we're in early days, so I'm totally fine with it now. So that's it. The CI you, we tell the, the customer how to integrate or how, how to use the the CI job we've created that will initiate the data extraction, the running of the models, the tuning of the models, and then the uh, output of uh, putting the comment in the in the issue uh sorry in the mr with the recommended mrs with the recommended reviewers so the 
we'd kick it off with the CI job. Then where where do we where, where do we where do we extract the data to and run the models? Is it a shared environment that's used by all customers where we partition out the data by customer? There's, there's a lot of pro, pros of that. We'd have to make sure we do it securely. So one, somebody couldn't get a different customer's model data, for example. Um, but the nice thing is it's one infrastructure that needs to be set up once and, ma and maintained in one place. If we build an infrastructure on the fly, we could partition customer data by infrastructure. But boy, does that, 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 that concerns me on uh, the maintainability of that. So I think we can create our own infrastructure, for instance, for now and make, for instance, a single pipeline for each customer. Uh, we, 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 you know, what, what you said, so we could have the same things when we recommend someone in the CI templates, because for instance, if this is, if the, if we have a template for project A, we don't need to, we don't, not don't need, we, we must not to recommend for project B. So the same thing. Absolutely. Since we are going some from, of the, many from, of the projects will be, um, will be private projects, not public ones. And not for ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. Ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, but the best thing that okay, I started to work on this issue today, so I found how to do that because we can reuse uh, GitLab tokens to check uh, to authorize uh, the CI, to authorize the CI template for making recommendations. And then, the, and then the 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 token would be put in the CI job configuration. Then. Uh. So so yeah, it depends. Uh, the main thing that as I understood. Uh, we cannot use CI job tokens generated by by the CI by 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 the CI job. So we cannot use these tokens to extract some data using API, because they first they leave only when the job is running, and then so they have a limited scope. So we cannot we cannot extract data. So that's why I think that we can so we we can generate a project token for each customer, or a customer can generate it, and then we can reuse these tokens. For instance to authorize uh, and review, I mean, to authorize and review when we recommend reviewers and to extract data. So like that, but there is one, one thing that for instance, if we, if we decide to, to move the entire pipeline to CI jobs, they are limited in, in time as I understood. Al Alper said that uh, there is only one hour, right? For- That's the default. Um, so and a lot of people are not aware of it. Um, I made a lot of stuff inside CI. So GitLab shared runners also have a limit, which is three hours. So that's something I think we can never change uh, on gitlab.com. But a customer locally on their self-managed instance can go and set any time out they want. Defaults are one hour uh, and three hours for runners, one hour for project at this moment. One kind of is we're not targeting self hosted customers at this time, only for .com hosted. But that's good to know for future. Yeah. Um, for GitHub.com, it's three hours. So anything, any job, any single job. So you can finally divide your test between jobs. Any single job which goes over, uh, uh, let's say, three hours can never run. For one hour, we have to tell the customer to go to the project settings and increase the limit. Otherwise, they will have a pipeline and job cancels ever. So could we do something like this where the CI job kicks off unreview, initiates the unreview, you know, data extraction, et cetera, but it's not the actual job that runs. The actual job that runs is, so we put like something in a message queue to say, we need to do the extraction for this customer and then do run the models and et cetera, et cetera. So the CI job just kicks it off and it finishes very quickly. All it does is, is queue the job somewhere else. So we're not limited to the time limit on, on a CI job. Because we don't need unreview to finish for the CI job to complete, right? It's just a good time to kick it off. So maybe we do yeah, something. Uh, I just like that from our previous conversation that we have the CI job to recommend or to train. I mean, initially when, with the first run, we need to start extracting data, but we can do that uh, like in background somehow. So we just start this process and then we, 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 we say that, okay, you need to wait a bit while the model is trained. Yeah, I mean, if, the CI, if, the, if the machine learning analysis took 
eight hours. We wouldn't want the CI, which it wouldn't, but let's just say that we wouldn't want the CI job to wait that long while that ran. It doesn't need to, it, it's, not a, it's not something that's sequentially is necessary. But you were saying, Albert? Question to uh, Alexander. Let's go out, out of the field. Let's say we have 10 million projects with repositories and we go crazy and we wanna now train in each repository on review for every project on GitLab and make it available in a, uh, let's say not inside CI, but in, a, in an infrastructure report. How long would it take or how big effort is it? Uh, so right now it's quite fast because we just have some kind of matrix factorization there. So we need to wait for when we tune the model. Uh, I mean, when we tune the hyperparameters, it, it could take like around one hour right now. So to train the model is quite fast. But for instance, when we start, I'm afraid that when we start to improve the model, for instance, adding some NLP or layers, I mean, when we start to process text, uh, merge request descriptions, here we can take, we need much more time, much more. And I'm afraid of that. So because for instance, customers, they paid for some CI CD minutes and we will start to spend them. Uh, of course, like we can, uh, I mean, there are so many things that we need to address because, uh, and we cannot change them at the same time because there are so many. For instance, as I understood, we can't restart automatically the CI drop right now. Yes, is it right? Um, you, you can have a pipeline schedule where you say like a cron syntax, you can say every hour, every day run that job. Or yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I saw that. But for instance, if we, if right now if we extract participants of the merge request, so we can, it, it, I don't know how it works right now, but you know, it takes a lot of time to extract even like 25 or uh, even like 50 participants using the GraphQL API. So sometimes the jobs, they are false because of that. Uh, it means that, uh, and we can easily restart. So we need to restart the job and then everything works fine. Question. Uh, so the data you are extracting, is it available? Hey, Alper, it's a little bit hard to hear you. Can you get a little bit closer to the microphone? Yeah. No, sorry. Um, no worries. Linux, um, Zoom, Wolf. One second, let me increase my, how is it now? Okay. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, fine, fine. Okay, Linux, Zoom, troubles of auto volume. So um, in short, uh, I, can you repeat your question? Because I had another concern, which I'm going to ask you, uh, Alexander. Sorry. Yeah, right. Uh, I mean that I'm afraid that we can't restart automatically the, uh, some CI jobs. For instance, if we need to extract participants, the, this job can easily uh, be broken. Yeah, because... that's, a, that's a good concern. So in short, uh, uh, jobs are usually, you know, uh, CI is done for testing. So jobs fail and your test fails. and you are happy you catch you caught something so that's not made for this if you need a retry logic i didn't respond to that immediately i'm sure there might be a feature there but in short if you need a retry logic you should implement that yourself in your own ci script yes uh, yes, yes however uh, let's investigate and um, i will ping fabio uh, he's more knowledgeable there might be a retrying logic there if Ever, but these jobs are made to fail, not rather than retry. They are not yes. big grand jobs. They are, you know, things you uh, want. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. That we have a lot of things that we need to address. So if we choose this way, we need to understand that maybe it will require some time because we need to uh, collaborate with some other teams to adapt, for instance, pipeline for this, uh, uh, for this uh, strategy. Uh, yeah, for this integration. Uh, if you have additional like say every day additional uh, repository data. Okay, I had two questions. Do you need, uh, do you do an incremental training or do you need to dump the data uh, from scratch regularly? Or do you need, do you do you, like, do you store the data somewhere uh, and train uh, incremental? Okay, so right now it's a full retraining, but the better solution, for instance, we can, uh, for instance, when we have a new data, we can, uh, we can pass like several iterations to adapt the model. And then for instance, after one week, we need to retrain the model to make the results better. The second thing, um, 
from GraphQL API, the data you are getting, does it come from, I'm trying to figure out if it comes from the database or repository, Git history, or both? Both, because both. both. Okay, if it's both, um, so you said it's too slow. Uh, I mean, the only other alternative is that we can get some data from the database, from the database somehow, because we have ways to connect to replica. The data team has direct connection, you know, that's what they do. Or um, for the repository, we can do a um, non-shallow or history clone. And if we can work with that, at least during the milestone two, we can check out the repository, which then we can incrementally check out more and keep that somewhere in some cache. Those could kind of speed up the GraphQL issue which you are mentioning. And I believe that uh, dumping data from GraphQL long-term is going to be a challenge if for larger projects. Uh, there are some fields that are not stored in the database, like merged ads, something like that, or merged, I don't remember. M M Michael knows better. Uh, and uh, for instance, we need to extract the change files. And right now we cannot do that using like pure GraphQL API. So we need to work with the local repository at the same time. Yeah, uh, you mean merged at you said? Just... Yes, I think I think this field, because uh, there is an issue I can send you uh, that for Just some- Send me, so, yeah, okay. So database team wants to have a small orthogonal table. So merge request is one table. There's merge request metrics table where you have the merged at date and add all merge request data is there, by the way, just if that answers. But send mm -hmm. me the issue, I will check. Yeah. Alexander and um, and Alfred and everybody, this is a great discussion. We can definitely go over on time if you both can. I think that'd be great. I do want to jump actually to agenda item number five and uh, just uh, Taylor's got an announcement and then we can come back to this. Taylor, you got an announcement for us? There we go. Sorry, I couldn't find the unmute button. Um, sorry, I'm driving someone to the airport. Um, so basically, I uh, interviewed for the uh, Applied ML PM role. I am thrilled to say that I have accepted it. As of um, technically 10-1, I'm off at the end of the next week. Um, so I'll officially be your product manager starting 10-4. So um, I'm around, as you all know, so um, I'll be able to give you all more dedication to this. Um, one thing you'll note is that while this is the Applied ML group, I am the product manager for Model Ops. So I'll be doing a lot more than just Applied ML. Um, but really thrilled to join the team, excited to give you all more focus and time. Great. Good. Awesome. Awesome. You're officially part of the team uh, rather than unofficially. The unofficial was fine too for a while, but that's awesome news, Taylor. Um, do we, uh, Sean, do you have time to cover? Uh, you want to yeah, cover? actually, I, I did want to talk about it a bit, and um, I have a I'm interviewing a candidate in just a few minutes, so I think I'll I'll drop off and I'll add it to next week's agenda. Okay, that's, that's okay. And people yeah. can read it too. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the the workshop and blog post. I, if I can do anything to help, you know, let me know. I think that'd be great. Yeah, I'll I'll read the comments async. And thanks very much, Alexander, for your offer. I'll definitely contact you about this. Cool. Okay. So right. I know. I know. Thanks, Sean. So uh, Alper and Alexander and anybody else in here, do, do you have more time to discuss what I um, interrupted, or do you not have time? If you don't, that's fine. You can, we can continue some other and some other time. I have. I have. It was I have time. Sorry. Okay. So sorry about interrupting you both. This is a great discussion. Uh, why don't we get back to it? So where did we leave off? Uh, if if that's okay. too. If that's too detailed, Alexander, I can sync with you too, just uh, because there are a lot of unknowns from my side on how Underview works and from your side on how, because I was on the product intelligence team, I was able to see how different parts of the system work because I was doing instrumentation there. So that might help uh, us to you know, answer some questions. Uh, maybe uh, we can sing tomorrow. We are in the same time zone, I think. I mean, yeah, or, or, or if you prefer to talk now, that's fine too. Uh, yeah, great let's, discussion. If you prefer, if you both prefer now, I'm I'm good with now. I see Alexander yeah, nodding too. So, yeah, let's go with Alexander's questions. Yes, please. So go ahead, Alexander. Okay, which question? The second one, right? 
No, I mean, any uh, in the milestone too, any uh, concerns, uh, you know, you uh, yeah. like any okay, questions so, you have on the CI yeah. GitLab product. Okay, okay. okay. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to find the best way, not the best, maybe the simplest way at this time, how to automate this full pipeline that we have right now. I see that in general, there are two ways. So the first way we use something like Airflow, another way we use uh, uh, GitLab CI uh, jobs, uh, CI pipelines. So uh, both, I think, are fine, but it looks like pipelines, they are, they are, they are cool, but maybe they are not adapted uh, right now for, for this kind of task that we have, right? So uh, you said that it, if we start to adapt them, it will be cool because it, it will be cool for the, company, for the company and for the customers because we, we can help improve the tool, but I'm afraid that it can take a lot of time. Because yeah, uh, we cannot do it. Perfect concern. So I think it's uh, a concern for model ops uh, and the uh, Bonnet, Eduardo Bonnet. Uh, in short, long term, that should happen. But short term, GitLab CI uh, is there's a runner. So it's a computer. I used it for data extraction, which works fine now for extracting or usage data from versions app to Snowflake. Uh, but uh, during that time, I had a lot of challenges, which I'm, that's why I'm sharing uh, all that information. And I tried to promote that approach as data pipelines to the uh, data team. And they were not that keen because classically data uh, engineers work with Airflow and a lot of different tools. They like direct connections, you know. Uh, so somehow that project which I did, which works fine now for extracting the usage data, uh, to Snowflake and to SciSense uh, works fine, but uh, didn't become a good example for other data. So we just use it for license app where we store GitLab licenses. So your concern is totally right. But in turn, Tyler said he is also responsible for model, for model ops and Eduardo Bonnet is also quite uh, interested in the discussions. Long-term, if we really wanna have applied ML in GitLab and in customer projects, we should solve this issue without a third party cloud service. That's the, uh, and how can we do it? Like, I don't know how Airflow is licensed, how it can be bundled. Um, Apache. And, yeah, Apache, okay. So in short, those are all questions, you know, and introducing a new component to bundle or even on gitlab.com is, Hard, but doing a single instance where you do it on Confluent GCP for yourself is possible now as part of Milestone 2, I think, because what you want to do is you want to learn now. So that's why, uh, yeah, that's a big concern. And you're right. So GitLab CI is not made for this exactly, depending on uh, how long the training takes and et cetera, how long the repository extraction takes, you might hit there a wall. And also even the data storage size wall, if you want to extract a huge uh, Git repository with a lot of storage and history. But what about the CI job is being extremely simple in terms of kicking off or queuing up a job elsewhere, something completely unrelated to CI that is in unreview to say, you know, uh, running the model has been requested for this project for this customer. And then that happens completely. Uh, so the CI job finishes basically almost right away, but then the mod, all the all the unreview stuff happens separately and in parallel and not related to the CI job. The CI job just kicks it off. Uh, Wayne, I totally agree there. So one thing I envision now is, let's say I go to my project. On my project, I enable unreview. I click a button that starts uh, some background jobs and uh, that says, hey, your uh, unreview will be available in some hours and we'll email you. And then we really run a background job and we gather the data which Alexander needs in a certain format, do the extraction in the backend and put it somewhere. Now there's the, there are still questions here. I don't, I didn't, I mean, I don't know, but then data is so easy that in the CI pipeline, the, uh, let's say the training and finally the uh, running of the model is kind of cheaper but training and so on uh, so is not subject to 
a lot of delays because of uh, extraction of data or transformation of that data. So we can do, I mean, when I think we can do what you tell by just maybe in some project clicking a button, you know, initially behind the feature flag, I want my project to have unreview, something runs and one hour later, uh, something becomes available. Um, and then I have the interview and then I can have a CI job or whatever. So that's one option. How would the feature flag interact with the feet with the CI job? I kind of see yes, those yes. As two different yeah. things. Like the CI job, the, 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 the customer, the user would, would, would have to add it specifically to the CI job. You know, we tell them in the documentation, if you want to run an interview, add this text, you know, to your CI job, which is great. Uh, so that would kick it off. Where does the fee feature flag? I think a feature flag is better than that, but that that might be good enough for a first iteration to do it in CI job. But how would would it, is it either or feature flag or edit the CI job manually, or would they both be done? And if so, how would they interact? I think and uh, why uh, because you know CI is, as you said is a manual process. Developers love it, and it's not easy. And okay, you include the template, but it's finally something we as GitLab engineers love and do and DevOps engineers do. Uh, and coming back, uh, the feature flag could only be that cosmetically, you know, when you wanna enable a button, you wanna hide it from people. So we have the feature flag rollout strategy by project. So we can enable disable per namespace so that customers don't see it uh, or don't see it unless we tell them to do so. So, so that they are not confused. So they are not like- be, so, so net is, it would be the feature flag would just be another way to kick off, tell when the CI job, when CI jobs run, also kick off unreview. So one way to do it is via the CI job, the, the CI job configuration. The other would be the feature flag, which basically would insert itself when CI jobs are run for that project. Say, go kick off unreview, you know. Um, so it, it's two different ways to enable the same thing, it sounds like, if I'm understanding correctly. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, but in short here, uh, let's go back to our, our, what we have to do. So we have to train, we have to extract data, hard problem. Uh, we, if you do it in the backend somewhere and make it uh, quite ready for uh, for unreview, that's going to be uh, that button, which I'm imagining behind the feature flag, you click on that, it does something and prepares all the data for this project, uh, but running the model or then making actual recommendations of reviewers could be done in a CI job easily for the time being, but long-term, anything is better to be on the UI. I mean, so you go to your merge request and there you have, I don't know how, but you need a product design there. And you suddenly, let's say I go to my project, I enable and review, then I go to my MR and I now see the reviewers for my MR coming from machine learning. That's the ultimate experience. Uh, I think um, GitLab Renderers is just a background job framework which we have available. That's why we like to dog food it and we want to use it. But overall, long term, anything is better to be in the UI. <laughs> I mean, um, or in the background job. Agreed. Uh, for the long term, yeah, sorry. Please. Uh, for the long term plans, for instance, we have we have a situation when for the new projects. We can collect data step by step. For instance, let's say that Unreview is integrated into the core. And once a user creates a project, so we can collect the required data step by step with every new merge request and new commits. But we will also have some old projects. And for these projects, we need to collect the past history. And it's a long running task. Sometimes it can be right for huge projects. Yeah, totally. So, that's so one thing. Um, one thing, Tim. I, do you know the people in charge of the GPU runner? Because they're, they're based on the things I'm, I'm, I'm hearing. Um, you said something, Alper, that resonated. That they said that the CI pipelines are made to 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 fail to catch some testing, and, and that's it. So the, this is not a machine learning workflow or machine learning yeah. pipeline thing. So so. The, this tool for that purpose probably is not the best, but I know that there is this team that they are working on the GPU run enable runners. 
So I didn't know that, for example, no more than three hours will be possible to, to use a, a runner. But it, I, know, I would say that this is standard that any training of machine learning model, this can take more than three hours, excuse me, three days. Do we know, or it would be good to ask them what is, what is their approach? How are they thinking about solving this problem? Because the, the way that the value proposition of the GPU runner is that is to train machine learning models. But if there is a hard stop after three hours, so it wouldn't make any sense. So I would be curious to know what, what do they, how, how are they planning to approach this? Because if they really are marketing it to train machine learning mo models, it should be longer than three hours. William, um, I, what I mentioned is that current shared runners have these limits on gitlab.com. However, GPU runners uh, probably are not that shared runners and probably mm -hmm. they could set their any limit they want. Uh, okay. um, so I was Even talking about the defaults account? and what we offer for free to users. Okay. Uh, so in GPU runners, probably they hit the same problem and they should solve it. But GPU runners are one part of the story. And I'm asking now, Alexander, do we use the GPU runners for training? That's the part which I'm missing. Uh, I'm also afraid that, for instance, we will start to integrate Unreview, and at the same time, we will start to develop a MetaOps platform, <laughs> even in the yeah. some very, you know, simple way, not maybe very reasonable for uh, for the customers, for customers, but anyway, it will look like uh, an, ML, an, an MLOps platform. Yeah, we definitely so, can't depend on what the model ops team is building from for milestone two. Although we want to keep an eye on it, so we we're not because because then milestone two won't be for a month, you know, until much further out. However, we don't want to be blind to what they're doing either and do things that we need to rewrite it without at least planning for that. Yeah, like we work in parallel right now with the with the MLOps team, right? Yeah, totally. Um, and your concern is right, Alexander. But overall, in short, it's the start of the journey. And I think you, uh, specifically you, yourself, you should focus on the smaller problem. But yeah. everything which we feel here as problems are the problems of the industry. And if GitLab is going to be finally useful for customers to do their own ML broadly, which is not the concern of applied ML at the time being, but it's going to be really cool to solve all these problems, you know, which we are facing. I think we will solve them, but let's solve them step by step because it's hard. Okay. We, we, we are very small team. So sometimes it's really hard to manage all this at the same time, so. Yeah, you're right. So that's why, I mean, so finally we have model ops team and other teams. So we should follow the, the viable way, which is possible at the current moment uh, for learning, like when um, stresses. Like, I would like to have, I would like to see that Unreview works for customers, even for some selected customers or who would like to test this feature as a better. But after that, we can replace some of the parts, right? Because, okay, we see that Unreview works and then we start to replace, for instance, some of the stages, maybe we will, we will go back to Kafka, but still Unreview will work. Um, I totally agree, but I'm not aware of the long-term plans there that, like, let's say we can make Unreview work, but we can keep, let's say we could keep exactly the same infrastructure you were using before GitLab. And we could, you could give us an API and we could make it work. We change um, everything almost. <laughs> no, uh, so that could make it work, but then that could not be easy to convert into a feature. So I think on one extreme, we make Unreview work exactly as it is, which is easy, but then we don't end up with a GitLab feature. On the other extreme, we convert GitLab into a full ML ops platform with reviewer capacity with machine learning. So I think, uh, yeah, I, I'm not trying to suggest one thing, but at the end of the day, we are GitLab, we are providing um, that tool to other people to use. I mean, and if you don't make it reusable, let me give you a silly example. I'm not well versed. Let's say that uh, the whole interview relies on a server and all customers who want to use it on gitlab.com or elsewhere need to go and open an account in Confluent or let's say GCP. That's going to be not very good long term. No, uh, no, we don't need this. We don't need these things even right now. Yeah, because I know uh, right now, but I just yeah. went to the other extreme, for example. Okay. 
Yeah. yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, I see. I agree. Yeah, I see. But like, uh, there are two cases. Uh, look, the first one, for instance, we uh, we choose Airflow and pops up, for instance, right? Uh, then it means that uh, okay, with the predefined site template, we recommend with the Airflow and pops up and Google and Google Dataflow, we extract and prepare everything, right? So it means that when we start to work on this third milestone, it means that we need to move data from self-hosted customers somehow to, to our site. For, for instance, we can do that uh, through the pop, through PubSub, right? If we choose uh, GitLab pipelines, maybe we can train even on the customer side and even on the self-customer self side, right? Because in this case, we don't need to move data outside of uh, their... Exactly. So, uh, you know, GitLab is finally, um, people love it because you self-host software, your source code, your repository is your asset. Uh, you are there and now uh, moving your repository data to us or a, to a third party for the customer is something they don't like a lot. Um, so overall, but, if we can yeah. make it work, if we can make that work locally, that's going to be the best outcome for, for the customer. Because repository data, um, even on GitLab, you know, like when we enable run review, um, normally going into the repository history of a customer and doing there uh, some training without the customer's knowledge is something which they won't like without initiating it first themselves. Yep. Mm -hmm. You might want to think about the implications okay. of that. Yeah. So, but maybe in this case, maybe we don't need to um, to to make this model too complicated to make it trainable on the customer side. That's what I mean. Maybe in this case, for instance, if we if we choose uh, GitLab pipelines and we do all of these things, for example, on the self on the self customer side, maybe in this case that will be one model, but we we could have another model on our side that is more complicated and we can take so we can spend more time to train it so yeah totally so gitlab.com is the only instance where namespaces are hosting different customers yeah. and all every like 200,000 or so or maybe half a million self-managed instances are smaller i made a little size analysis there but what you say is i think true in short uh, for gitlab.com, we can do something different. And um, ideally, of course, we want to have the same thing exactly on gitlab.com on the self-managed long-term, but uh, we can always, uh, gitlab.com can always be the forerunner, uh, pioneer of new things. And in the meantime, if the um, self-managed evolves uh, and people can do more there because model ops or other teams do great things there or GPU runners, then, then that's going to be um, then viable for us and we can do that way in the future. Um, so what do you think if we, for instance, if we put uh, data extraction into a CI job? Initially, uh, let's put it, uh, by the way, we can even get the size of the repo. If it's more than a certain, we can just say not at the moment, you know, for a certain customer. Probably yep. gitlab.org, gitlab is one of them. <laughs> I mean, huge repo. Um, uh, but uh, so I think, I mean, let's go the um, way we described naively and let's see if we hit all the challenges, you know, um, on the data instruction. And we can really, finally we are gitlab, the company, and we can go and change the anything like uh, William suggested, we can go and check the GPU runners, we can check the runner timeouts, have more runners, have a special runner with a different timeout, have a, uh, a apply them as runners, which no one uses, stuff like that, which could be easier. Uh, Wayne, what do you think? Do we have time? I'm sorry. I, I got to try. I got distracted. Can you repeat again? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, do we have time to test, to try, for instance, this solution of using CI pipelines, but probably maybe we we need to improve something. I mean, something in using pipelines, maybe the usual way how these pipelines are used right now, are using right now. So what do you think? So make sure I say, so 
do you think it's okay to use pipelines now for what they can ben how we can benefit from them but change it in the future to something else uh, no it's like alper suggested this thing that if we use uh gitlab pipelines it means that we can improve them uh, is it right so we can uh, i wouldn't want to depend on improving them because that uh, they're very critical part of the product and not and they're not simple not in a bad way that they're not simple there's just lots of features um it we may not be able to improve them in the short term uh and still achieve our goals and apply them that so we can improve them surely you know everybody can contribute uh that doesn't mean that all changes are accepted or that all teams agree on all teams other teams changes etc so that might be they might love it or they might it might give them pause i don't know what changes we'd, we'd no, make so. uh, what i meant is actually not. just what yeah. i meant is just increasing the timeout settings uh, and having yeah. a shared runners which is not changing code which could be easier to do uh, so the um oh the I, I like the idea it was sort of a feature and i don't know how viable the idea is the, the way i understand it is we have a feature flag that does the extraction and that kicks off the extraction and that means the extraction is not is not limited to a time frame it, it it's enabled by feature flag we maybe we'd kick i don't know would it be kicking off a sidekick job perhaps to to, to the sidekick job then goes and does the extraction and then stores the data wherever it needs to be. And then when we actually want to run the model later and, and uh, output the recommendation, that we put in the CI job. Because running the model and updating the MRs with a comment saying who's recommended is going to be much faster. And you know, we'll take nowhere near an hour. Yeah, that's what I'm what I'm implementing right implementing right now. A CI template to that 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 makes requests to to the model and then you just need generate. to read the model so how do you get the data into the model i think we get the data into the model via a feature flag it's not via ruby code ruby yes. on rails code controlled by a feature flag um and if uh, customers have to use both right you can't do one without the other and if they do one without the other it won't work of course uh, okay, uh, so, that, so that's that's not a good user experience, but that's still okay for an MVC, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, there is a feature flag. Once this feature flag is enabled, we start data extraction automatically. But as I understood, we cannot do that in CI jobs in this case, right? Right. So we need to do the, to do this somewhere outside of these jobs. Then, for instance, uh, a user can add a CI template. And this CI template will generate recommendations that can be parsed later. And yes, all all the so I mean the recommendation process works in CI jobs. Mm -hmm. It seems but, reasonable to me. Yeah, but there can be situation, for instance, when the model is not trained yet. It means that we need to say something like, okay, so let's we need to stop this job saying that. Okay, so we can't I think recommend. It's fine. I think if, if, if the data extraction, uh, if the model is not built yet, if the data extraction is not done yet, or the model is not ready yet, I think it's fine that that's a case where um, when the CI job runs, it just says it's, it's not ready yet. It just comments it, it, it outputs in the log yep. saying that. Um, most MRs don't succeed on first try. So, you know, uh, because, you know, automated tests don't succeed, et cetera. So, They'll run it again, most likely, and then get a recommendation later. And if the, and actually, even if even if this even if the code is mergeable on first run of, of all the pipelines, that's okay. They can rerun. They can kick off the pipelines again once the model's ready. They can click the run button again, and it'll kick it off later manually. I think those are those are fine. Review roulette works right now like that. Oh, it does okay. I mean, you can easily rerun. So, so the security scanners. If you want to rerun your security scans. On, on changed code where you want to see it ran the first time, but you know, or you want to run it again to see if there's any new vulnerabilities based on new things that the scanners find since you last ran them. You just hit the run button again to rerun your pipelines and it'll pick up the latest configuration. So it's it's a, it's a kind of, it's similar in some ways. Uh, there is also another, oh, sorry. There is also another uh, strategy. For instance, we have this, we have this predefined CI template where we recommend and once this template is run, 
we start the extraction process. I mean, we trigger somehow, for instance, another pipeline, CI pipeline maybe, or something else, where we where we extract data. So there is another case like, and it means that this CI template works like a feature flag. Yeah, I think that can also work fine. I mean, we have several alternatives. I, I'm aware that I'm, uh, so in short, you go there, you check if there's a model uh, data, if no, you extract it. If yes, then you, so you launch, uh, you also pipeline architecture is quite rich. Finally, you can launch a new job or inside one job, you can do all this. Um, um, and, and then finally, uh, you, if you don't have enough data, you can say, as Wayne mentioned, at the moment, the training is continuing. Um, we run it at some point. Mm -hmm. That's something we do actually for some cases. So we can, um, I mean, uh, one trouble which I have to mention is that while defending the backend approach, sidekick jobs um, in GitLab have five minutes recommended runtime. So that means you mm -hmm. have to divide the job into very little. So uh, when I was calculating a lot of stuff there, I, I would never expect anything to run on the backend more than three hours. Our database have a 15 second timeout on GitLab.com. I'm not sure so we have three hours, but yes. So that's still also a good question for me because I would like to have some kind of A-B test, as Alper said in one of the issues, to understand, uh, how, do we need to improve the current model? How can we improve the current model? Maybe we need to change the direction completely. Maybe for instance, right now I thought that maybe we need to, to introduce, for instance, some text description uh, features to the data set that maybe we don't need these things completely. Maybe uh, customers, users, maybe they want something else. So it, it would be good to have this kind of, uh, but at the same time, we don't have a, let's say a platform where we can test all these things. I mean, this MLOps platform. So we cannot um, like we can't write the model and run this model just in five minutes in in production or in stage. Uh, by model, you are talking about you are mentioning machine learning model, right? Yes, yes, machine any learning. any machine learning model. So we don't have this uh, ability to do. Uh, yeah, we we are like uh, <laughs> we have two problems at the same time, and this is why we need to find some kind of trade off. Trade off, right? Yeah, totally. Um, I mean, a lot of unknowns because finally um, we are, as the pioneer here in the DevOps, we are trying to do applied ML. And that's why all the challenges we face are true challenges, which everyone would face. And the solutions to them are going to be need to be innovative, actually. That's what I believe. I mean, so we can try multiple alternatives, like you said, too. Yes. But yeah, of course, there are a lot of like open source projects that can help us, like ML, uh, ML Flow or some other. But still, we need to maintain them. We need to install. We need to to do a lot of things. So we cannot take them all and introduce at the same time, right? Yeah, totally. Introducing new components is quite uh, difficult. That's a great discussion. Yeah, maybe that's why Mon said that this is the best time to join our team. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a uh, that's a hard, challenging, but fun decisions to make. So yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank, uh, I know this went a lot longer than we scheduled, but that's just fine. I know Alexander, you've been wanting to bounce a bunch of ideas off of um, what you were thinking off of somebody who knows the GitLab product in detail. And thank you, Alper, for being that person today, so you could uh, give us all your great uh, advice. Thanks a lot. Yeah, sorry, sorry for not giving uh, exact answers. As you see, there are trade-offs in every choice, and um, and we are in a challenge. That's the fact. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.